Freedom is never cheap. It always costs too much. But Taiwan has no choice. It must pay it, even if that means fighting to the death. China isn't backing down. War might be the only option. But Taiwan is ready. The small island nation has been building weapons it could never build before and is arming itself in ways only world powers would dare. The heat is on in this battle of Taiwan versus China. What is Taiwan? An island nation in East Asia with a bustling population of 23 million people. Taiwan, despite a tiny land area of 36,000 square kilometers, is quite successful. It is the 21st largest economy in the world with a GDP of $750 billion and it has a per capita of over $32,000, a top 30 figure. This is what Taiwan is to everyone else at least. To China, Taiwan is a breakaway province that must be recaptured under mainland China's control. Taiwan has promised this will not happen, at least not without a fight. The US is solidly behind them and is also ready to go to war. China too isn't backing down. If it must be war, then let it be war. War, one of the most consequential events and probably the worst invention in human history, is surprisingly easy to ignite. All it needs are parties ready to fight to back up their claims with their claws, fangs, bullets, bombs, missiles, nuclear warheads, and so on. And the stage is set. It's no different here. With billion-dollar militaries on both sides ready to fight over what they believe in, the waters that connect Taiwan and China have become a potential stage for war. Above them, fighters armed to the teeth. On their surface, ships oiling up their guns. And perhaps most consequentially, beneath the surface, submarines ready to wreak havoc. In many scenarios that simulate this war, submarines are a crucial decider on who wins and who doesn't. So both sides are heavily invested in their submarine fleets. All three major parties in this conflict plan on inserting submarines, or metal sharks if you will, into the waters of war. Like any shark, Submarines can lurk beneath the surface, leap to the surface, and most importantly, strike with the viciousness of a great white. Here are the respective sharks of Taiwan, the US, and China. Haikun-class submarines, Taiwan. The Haikun-class is a class of submarines currently being developed by the CSBC Corporation of Taiwan for the Taiwanese Navy. It is Taiwan's first indigenously built submarine. With the massive threat from China looming, Taiwan has had to improve its own submarine building capabilities and rely less on foreign builders. The result is the Haikun class of powerful diesel electric submarines, more particularly, the Haikun submarine, the first of the class. The Haikun was launched in September last year. It was seen entering water for the first time a few months ago to begin its sea trials. The glory of the submarine could be seen in full detail. Six 533mm torpedo tubes constitute the main armament of the submarine. As well as MK-48 heavyweight torpedoes, these tubes can accommodate harpoon anti-ship missiles which Taiwan already has, and potentially also sea mines. Also in the forward part of the ship's hull is the cylindrical array sonar, CAS, which serves as the primary part of the ship's acoustic sensor suite. Comprising an arrangement of hydrophones in a circle around the hull's cross-section, the CAS provides a panoramic view of any surrounding contacts. Sticking out prominently from the top of the hull, well forward of the sail, is the mast-like arrangement of the acoustic intercept or ranging array. This is used to localize, process, and display intercepted active sonar transmissions and any acoustic transient events. The system provides the bearing, range, and speed of the signal source. It can also be used to monitor weapons and countermeasures deployed by the submarine itself, as well as underwater communications and the boat's own noise level. At the rear of the boat, there is the X-shaped rudder and tail fin arrangement, 
as well as a fairly standard propeller, a bladed type, without a signature-reducing vortex attenuator as found on the German Type 212 class, for instance. There are so far no reports of the rumored Air Independent Propulsion System, or AIP system. If the rumors are true, an AIP system would significantly increase the time the Haikun can stay submerged and make it much harder to detect by enemy forces. And this is only the tip of the iceberg, it seems. In addition to the aforementioned weapons, other critical mission systems are provided by Lockheed Martin, and at least six other countries have also reportedly provided help, including the United Kingdom. All of these combine to give each member of Taiwan's new class of submarines a hefty unit cost of $1.54 billion. Virginia-class submarines, United States Moving from the latest attack submarines in Taiwan to the latest attack submarines of the U.S., we have the Virginia-class submarines. The Virginia class is a class of 2.8 to $4.3 billion nuclear-powered cruise missile fast-attack submarines of the United States Navy. Being the U.S. Navy's latest submarine class in service, it incorporates the latest in stealth, intelligence gathering, and weapons systems technology. Virginia class submarines are designed for a broad spectrum of open ocean and littoral missions, including anti-submarine warfare and intelligence gathering operations. The first of the Virginia-class submarines, USS Virginia, is the first U.S. Navy submarine to be completely designed on a computer. She was delivered to the Navy in 2004, but wouldn't spend much time enjoying her new home as just one year after she would be deployed to support the global war on terrorism, where she showcased her might in the brightest, indomitable colors. USS Virginia and her siblings all have a 25-knot top speed on the surface and an Olympic gold-winning 35 knots underwater. This impressive mobility is thanks to a General Electric SG-9 nuclear reactor propulsion system that can run for more than 30 years at a stretch without refueling. In addition to this brand new propulsion system, the Virginia-class submarines incorporate several innovations not found in previous U.S. submarine classes or any submarine class across the world. These innovations include the unified modular masts, where all masts share a common design that allows them to be puzzled together into an integrated system for housing, erecting, and supporting the most advanced mast-mounted antennas and sensors the U.S. has to offer such as the U-shaped large aperture bow sonar, lightweight wide aperture arrays on the port and starboard flanks, a TB-29 towed passive array for rearward detection, and so on. The result of all these is a holistic and efficient sensing of the environment that gives the submarines a sense-first, kill-first advantage over the opposition. Each Virginia-class submarine is armed with 65 missiles and torpedoes in total, including the UGM-84 sub-harpoon missile, the novel anti-ship and land attack dual-purpose Tomahawk, and the Mark 48 Advanced Capability Heavyweight Guided Torpedoes. To top it all off, according to open-source budget documents, Virginia-class submarines could be the first submarines to wield high-energy 300 to 500 kilowatt laser weapons. With such a lineup from the U.S. and Taiwan, China better come prepared with some insane submarine power. China's Submarine Power China has one of the most powerful submarine fleets on the planet. How would China employ this fleet in response to the Taiwanese and American fleets? No one knows, but the Asian world power has quite an array of options. China has both a nuclear-powered submarine fleet and a robust diesel-electric submarine fleet, which are constantly being upgraded and enlarged with new designs and technologies. The fleet includes six SSBNs armed with the nuclear-capable JL-2 SLBMs, six SSNs armed with torpedoes and conventional missiles, and then 46 SSKs, which are diesel-powered attack submarines used for coastal defense, anti-submarine warfare, and special operations. These are the options at China's disposal to call on in its bid to absorb Taiwan into its territory. Whichever option China goes with, though, one thing's for sure. Taiwan will fight back. Of course, Taiwan will be backed by the United States in case of a Chinese invasion, which is a massive backing. 
enough backing to make any nation relax and pull back on the pedal, but not Taiwan. The island nation is going all out to fortify itself enough to single-handedly thwart China's invasion. This is incredible bravery, considering that China's economy is about 23 times larger than Taiwan's, and China's population is a whopping 60 times more. But it's no walk in the park. Taiwan has had to prepare for years, and the preparations have only gotten more intense. New air defense missiles for the Navy's six Kongding-class frigates, four MQ-9B armed drones for the Air Force, along with an arsenal of missiles for the service's fleet of F-16 fighters have become a priority. Missiles plus sensors to guide them and vehicles to launch them have particularly dominated Taiwan's spending plans to satisfy an urgent need for anti-ship, land attack, and anti-air capabilities. The idea is to lob so many missiles at an incoming Chinese invasion force that the munitions overwhelm the invader's defenses. The goal is to sink half of the potentially hundreds of large ships carrying Chinese troops toward Taiwan's ports and beaches. With the entire arsenal of weapons Taiwan has acquired and stacked up, it might be able to do just that. Taiwan is a small sovereign island nation that aims to remain sovereign even if that means going up against one of the most powerful nations in the world. Backed by the United States, this island nation is ready to take on China with groundbreaking submarines, missiles, and everything else to maintain this sovereignty. To help them out, give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.